Hey everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutor.com coming in making a video tonight on a topic that I get a lot of email about. And um, before I begin, I just want to let people know, uh, sometimes I get emails from people who say, oh, my kids love your videos. Uh, if you have your kids watch my videos, this is probably not a video you want them to watch. We are going to be getting into some a little bit of a sensitive topic uh, that you, know, you might want to just bypass that whole thing. I know I appreciate that when people warn me if I have a little one around and I don't want them to watch something that, you know, they, that may come up. So we're going to be getting into a little bit of a sensitive topic on this, um, and that's you know, with relationships and such. So I uh, just put that out there and uh, let that go with that. Uh, anyway, I get a lot of emails on spouses. My spouse doesn't get it. They don't understand that I'm that I should be keeping Torah, and they don't they don't get this. And and um, I try to explain to them about the pagan roots of, of Christianity and the pagan roots uh, of Christmas and all this stuff, and they don't get it. They don't see where I'm coming from. They think I've just gone nuts. What do I do? And so um, here's what I've been telling people to do. Just recently, I was at Gott's, the Gathering of the Saints, uh, Pastor Dow's place, and I had three guys just there uh, come up to me and ask me the same question. You know, I have this situation at home. What do I do? My wife thinks I'm gone crazy. Uh, and uh, and so they had different scenarios. I hear different scenarios, and each one of them is painful because I can feel and see the pain in the person who's telling me the story, either in person or in email. And um, it's just difficult. It's hard for me to tell you what to do because uh, each situation is so different. Um, let, let me begin by saying the, the advice I gave these two people is what I'm going to tell you. Uh, there were two things, and there was a third thing that – was kind of a revelation to me as I was leaving Guts, and I wish I would have showed this to them as well, but it was too late when I, as I was leaving. Maybe they'll watch my video. So number one was I said be in prayer. Stay in prayer. Get on your knees. Physically get on your knees and ask the Father for guidance and direction on this situation in your household. Um, we need to be a, per, a people who can get on our knees and pray. And today, American doesn't, America doesn't do that. We don't actually get on our knees anymore and pray. It, we, we're, too, we're too proud for that. Physically, get on your knees, put your face on the ground before a Most High Yah and come before His throne and say, Father, I need help. My family, I see the direction you want me to take this family. I see the truth. I'm learning it, uh, but I need help in how to implement it. And seek his guidance in that, and, and let him know the situation in your home, and, and and seek his will. Again, and be faithful in that prayer. Continue to do it, and I bet you you'll see you'll see changes. You'll see heart changes. You know, we love to be able to try to force people to change their heart condition. We can't do that. We can't do it. We have to let him do it. And if we're not opening, if we're trying to do it all ourselves, it'll never happen because he's going to be like, hey, okay, you want to do it yourself? You go ahead and you try. Uh, but you need to open it and leave it up to him. Say, Father, I need you to do this. I need you. And, and let him try to do it. Back off. You're not going to get it done. You can't get the job done. He is in the heart-changing business, not you. So um, uh, let that happen. The second thing I told these guys to do was to make sure your spouse knows you love him. If you're a woman, make sure your husband knows and you keep showing that respect to your husband. Love and respect. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect your husbands. Me and my wife are now on our ninth year of marriage. We have um, learned early on that it's a love and respect. It's a cycle. Uh, I love her. She respects me. I love her. She respects me. If something gets in the way of one of that, of that cycle, it breaks down on both ends. And so you, as a husband, <clears throat> speaking mostly to men because that's mostly where I get the emails from, is men, you need to make sure you love your wives and you need to make sure that they know that you will never stop loving them. They need to hear it. They, they need to hear it. And so uh, go ahead and do that. The third thing was something that it was a, kind of a red, and that's kind of where I left it when I was talking to these guys. And, and uh, I'm hope, making this video so I can pass this on to other people who I, who I get these emails from on a weekly basis. And uh, I guess at this point, it was a revelation. I was putting it together as I was leaving Gots, and uh, it was just amazing to me. I didn't think of this before. A couple of years ago, I'm driving down the road, driving to work, and I'm listening to a pastor on the radio. And this pastor is talking about the thousands of couples that he has counseled during his time as a pastor. This is a very famous pastor. If I told you his name, you would absolutely recognize his name. He's a very famous pastor. And he's counseled thousands of married couples. And out of all the thousands of married couples he, he has interviewed and um the ones with the very bad marriages, the ones with the real heartache problems, uh, I mean, they had lots of problems, he said. 
but it always came back usually usually about 90 percent of the time he said it usually came back that the man was not being the spiritual leader of the home he refused to be the alpha he refused to be the leader of the home he wouldn't lead and the wife uh, who was taking uh, the front seat the, in the relationship. The wife was being the alpha. The, li- the wife was being the spiritual leader of the home. The wife was getting, uh, being the leader of the home and making the, the, pushing the family forward. And the wife is not built to do that. The wife is not meant to do that. Uh, and, and the marriages were having tons of problems. And this pastor couldn't understand all why the issues of how all these problems were happening. And, and, and uh, he finally put it together. He realized after thousands of couples, you know, and he said 90% of these couples, it always came down to the same thing. No matter what the problem was, it usually came down to the problem that the man was not being the alpha in the, in the relationship. And he realized out of all of these relationships, each of these relationships, they didn't wait before they had sex before they got married. They didn't wait. They ended up having sex before they got married. And, and he, he said something that was so profound. He said, because these, these people, out of all of them, he said it couldn't have been a coincidence. 90% of these couples, the, the man refused to be the alpha. He couldn't be the alpha. He couldn't be the spiritual leader of the home. And all of all of these couples who, where the man wasn't the alpha, where the man wasn't the spiritual leader of the home, all of these couples, it seemed like to him, they all had all not waited. They had all had sex before marriage. And he said something that was so profound. Hit me like a ton of bricks. He said, it's like they were cursed. Did you hear me? He said, it's like they were cursed. It's like as soon as they, they, they made that wrong choice and then got married, it's like the roles reversed all of a sudden. You know? Sometimes slowly but surely, but sometimes all of a sudden. He says, it, but it was definitely they reversed, where the woman changed from the beta to the alpha, and the man changed from the alpha to the beta. And the woman led the home. And that led to all sorts of problems. All sorts of problems, you know, that this pastor was describing. And it was so profound. He said, it's like they were cursed. And here I am, two years ago, reading the Torah and understanding the Torah. It's amazing the wisdom that will be imparted to you once you go back and read the Father's commandments. I'm screaming at my radio going, no, duh, because it's against the Father's commandments to do that. And it just, it says that, you know, there will be blessings and there will be curses for those who obey and those who disobey. If you choose to obey his commandments, you will be blessed. If you choose to disobey his commandments, you will be cursed. Well, let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28. Chapter 22, verse 28. I got it on my screen here. It is, if a man, chapter 22 of Deuteronomy verse 28, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all of his days. All right, now, first off, right off the bat, if you're using a new translation, something like the NIV or the ESV or the New Living Translation or the American Standard Bible or something that was probably copyrighted in the last 50 years that comes from the Latin Vulgate, uh, it probably says rape there. That's a bad translation. This is not rape. Uh, There are many other verses that pertain to rape in the Torah, and the rapist always gets put to death, period. Uh, There's no condoning rape in the Bible. Don't let that... There, there are a lot of problems because of mistranslations in America today of the Bible. Uh, don't let that. Th- this is not rape. In fact, the Hebrew word here that's used in verse 28 that says, and lay hold on her, lay hold on her, is the same word that is used when Potiphar's wife takes hold of Joseph. Let me submit to you that Potiphar's wife was not about to rape Joseph. So that is not the word here. This is not, the, this is not a rape that's taking place in that chapter 22, verse 28 of Deuteronomy. This is absolutely consensual sex. This is sex that two people have gotten together, and outside of the father's covering, her father's covering, the woman's father's covering, have decided to go ahead and have relations. Uh It's very clear in Numbers uh, chapter 30 that if a woman vows a vow and her father hears it and disregards it, then the vow is dead. Um, Gentlemen, why do you think you go before, if if you're a real gentleman, uh, why do you think you went and went to the father-in-law before you asked your your bride to marry you? You asked your father-in-law 
uh, for his daughter's hand in marriage. Or you should have. That's because the woman, the, the daughter, is under her father's covering. If you took hold of your wife before you were married, you took hold of something that was not yours to, to take hold of. And here we see in Deuteronomy verse 29 that if you do this, you are to pay that father uh, 20 or 50 shekels of silver. This is a one ounce silver round. Uh, a shekel is about a half an ounce. So 25 ounces is basically what you're to pay your father-in-law uh, if you took hold of your bride before it was time to take hold of her, before she had you had the permission from her father and were married. Um, when you take hold of something that's not under your covering, you violated Torah. You broke Torah. You sinned otherwise. What does 1 John 3, 4 tell us? 1 John 3, 4. I had not known sin. Oh, sin is transgression of the law. That's what it says. Sin is transgression of the law. So you have just violated Torah. You took hold of something that was not yours to take hold of. You've sinned. And this pastor I was listening to on the radio a couple years ago, he got it. He had interviewed all these couples and realized that many of these couples, the roles had been reversed. So let me ask you something. Are the roles reversed in your home? Does the woman follow you as the alpha, as the beta should follow the alpha? Are you the spiritual leader of your home? Do you lead your home with, with the spiritual guidance that, that, are, that comes from the Most High? I submit to you that many marriages, that is not happening. Many marriages in churchianity, that doesn't happen. You know, Christianity is quick to say we need to wait till marriage, but they're not very quick to point out where it says that in the Bible because it says that in the Torah. That's a Torah commandment. That's, a, that's the, right from the Father. So let me submit this to you. If you're having these issues in your home, and uh, you, you're having this, there's this seems to be this impasse. You can't get past um, uh, a block. You know, your wife's not receptive or your husband's not receptive to this at all. And uh, there's just something, you know, a lot of times this pastor realized when I was listening to him on the radio, he realized whatever the problem was, they had to take it back to the beginning and see if there was any iniquity, any lawlessness earlier prior in the marriage. And a lot of times he found out that it was this. And uh, once they figured this out, went back and repented, repented, and asked for forgiveness, uh, the problems, other problems seemed to correct themselves because the, the, the man became the spiritual leader of the home. The roles were reversed. You know, we can reverse the curses of God, but we need to come to him on our knees and ask for forgiveness. Um, a lot of repentance, you know, happens with a tearful eye and, and being on our knees. We need to come and ask the Father, say, and that's what we see in all throughout the Bible when people were worthy to just really wanted to repent. The Father saw them worthy and, and accepted them again. You know, but if you were rebellious and you were hard hearted, uh, he rejected you. And that was it. So listen, here's the deal. That's the advice I'm giving you. Number one, pray. Uh, continue to pray faithfully. Ask the Father for guidance. Get on your knees, get on your face, and, and come to him for guidance and direction. Number two, Make sure your wife, make sure your spouse, make sure your husband knows that you love and respect them. Number three, if there is some sort of iniquity in your past, some sort of lawlessness in your past, especially sex outside, sex before marriage, um, you didn't wait to take hold of your wife uh, uh, when you should have waited, um, then you need to go. I'm not saying go out and, and pay the father-in-law 50 shekels of silver. Okay, I'm not saying that. Maybe that's what you need to do. That's between you and the Most High. But if your father-in-law, your father-in-law may be dead. Your father-in-law, you know, you, may, you might not be able to afford, you know, 25 ounces of silver, which is 50 shekels. I mean, that's a lot of money. It's like 900, you know, bucks or whatever, I think. So, I mean, it's expensive. You may not be able to do that. But I think the first thing you need to do is get on your knees and ask for forgiveness, you know, to the father. Because it's not your father-in-law that you offended. It's the father up above the Father who is the Most High, Yah, who you've offended. So go before him and ask for forgiveness. I just think uh, maybe that's where we need to begin. I don't know for sure, but that's the advice I'm giving you to, uh, to people who are coming to me and say, listen, my spouse just doesn't get it. We, she's not being receptive. He's not being receptive. What do we do? How do we, how do we get our family on track? And, uh, you know, so that's my advice. Pray, you know, reassure each other of your love um, because you're a team. And, and and find out if there's any past iniquity that you need to uh, ask to seek for forgive seek forgiveness for. Let me show you a really good video. This is a video called Truth or Tradition. It's by Pastor Jim Staley. Uh, this was one of the first videos that me and my wife watched when we first got out of all the mess that we got out of. Um, this is an awesome, awesome video. And and um, 
my wife wasn't ready for this when I watched it. When I watched it, it was a month before her, I think, and uh, I already had a Christmas tree up. It was about that time of year in our house, and by the time I got done watching this video, I wanted to take that tree and chuck it out on my front lawn. I was so angry. But my wife was not ready to hear that message yet. So I'm not saying go never go before your wife or your husband and say, you have to watch this video or you have to watch this or that and you have to read this in the Bible and, and try to get them to come to an understanding like you already have an understanding. It doesn't work that way. Um, you're not going to change anybody's heart. Let, let the, like I said, let, let the Father do that. But you know, I, I've recommended this video before to other people and you set aside some time. You set aside a date night. You, you get the kids to bed. You turn the lights off. You turn the phone. Unplug your cell phones. Turn, take, whatever. Take the, turn the phones off. Um, because when you're trying to impart wisdom upon yourself that comes from the Most High, the enemy will do whatever he can uh, to interrupt that. So uh, get the kids to bed. Um, you know, unplug the phones, uh, tell the neighbors you're going away, whatever you got to do, and then sit down and watch a video and just say, honey, you know, let's talk about this. Let's watch this and let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Tell me what you think. And then if they're not receptive to it, drop it. Let it go for a month and pray. Let, pray about it and see what and, and see what the Father does. You know, and, and and then maybe bring it up again in a month or something. Um, you know, we just had I, I don't know the answers to everything. Everybody, everybody's gonna be different, everyone's gonna have a different scenario. And I feel the pain. I really do. I feel the pain in the emails that I get, and I feel the frustration, and my heart goes out to you, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know, know what to tell you. Other than that, I'm very thankful that I have a wife uh, who, who, me and her both get it, and there's no none of that none of that complication, none of that mess inside our household, uh, and I know a lot of people who who really want that for their household as well, uh, because they've seen the truth, and once you see it, you don't want to go back to the lies, you really don't. So anyway, like I said, I'm recommending this video. Great video. Uh, Truth or Tradition. 119 Ministries is also coming out with a new one called Sunburn. Uh, and it's all about the pagan, uh, uh, Christi uh, pagan Christianity and pagan traditions of Christmas and Easter. Check that out. Sunburn. It should be out hopefully. I can't wait. Uh, in probably uh, maybe a month or so. But uh, this is a good one as well if you haven't seen this one yet. So, all right. That's it. Take care. Love you guys all. And, uh, and I, like I said, I... I feel the frustration. I really, really do. And I'm going to be praying for you all. And uh, uh, hopefully this, this video will help uh, shed some light on this whole topic. All right, guys. Take care. Uh, go home and read your Bible. Thanks.